All right, the second part of 7.2 talks about volumes of revolution. So um, these notes starts off exactly the same. Here is the region R. This is the region R that we're talking about. All right, and so we, we find that area, you know, back in chapter 4 by um, using Riemann sums, and it ends up being a, a definite integral. We integrate from 0 to 2 of this function, and we find the area between... Um, that's that's bounded by the square root of x, um, x equals 2 and y equals 0. So we find that area, right? Um, with, with the volume of revolution, what we're doing now is we're taking that area and we are rotating it around the x-axis. So imagine we could take this little cutout and rotate it this way and it would sweep out a volume as we rotated it. All right, so we rotate it 360 degrees and we sweep out a volume and each one of these little slices sweeps out a volume that looks something like this. We get a volume there. All right? But if if we were to look at this um, piece that we just created here, this disk from the side. So if we looked at it again kind of from that direction, we would see that we just have a big circle, right? And this distance right here is our radius of that circle. Right. So this height here is defined by the square root of x. So that's this distance right here. So that is also our radius, the square root of x. All right. So the area of this circle is pi r squared. Here's our pi r squared. And the radius is the square root of x. So pi times the square root of x squared is the area of one of those circles. And each one has a thickness of delta x. So the volume of one disk is pi times x times delta x. So just like we did last time um, with the known cross sections and just like we do with the Riemann sums when we find area in chapter 4, we're going to take... Uh, a summation of all those disks, apply a limit as delta x approaches zero, and we get a definite integral of pi x dx. And we're integrating from, again, from zero to two. All right. So it's, uh, it's very much like the known cross sections, except when we do a volume of revolution, the cross section that we always get is a circle with a radius which is defined by the height of the function that, w that we used. All right. Um, so we get, we get this, um, we take the pi out, we take the uh, constant, factor the constant out in front, 0 to 2 of um, definite integral from 0 to 2 of x dx, easy antiderivative, evaluate at 2, evaluate at 0, subtract, we get 2 pi cubic units. So in general, this is the approach we're going to take. We have for a horizontal rotation um, axis of rotation. So that means we're rotating um, about either the x-axis or a y equals some constant axis. It's going to be the radius squared is our um, inter integrand. So we're going to have pi times the integral from a to b of the radius squared dx. You can see there's the pi r squared. Right. If we have a vertical axis of rotation, so for revolving or rotating around the y-axis or some um, line with the equation of x equals a constant, then we're going to um, integrate with respect to y. We're going to go from one y value to the other, the lower limit to the upper limit, pi r squared, but now r is a function of y. All right, so that's called the disk method because when we look at those cross sections, each one is a disk. 
right? We could also have a situation that, that um, requires us to use what's called the washer method, all right? So we're gonna take the same region R, all right? Last time, we rotated it around the x-axis. And so when we, when we rotated this shape around the axis, it, we got a solid shape. So we got a solid three-dimensional shape, all right? In this case now, we're gonna rotate that same region about the line y equals negative one. So here's the axis of revolution down here. All right. So we're going to take a look at that and we have here's the square root of x. If we were to look at this from the side we would have from this upper function to the axis of rotation is is large r. Uh, you can't see that in, in in the video, I don't think. But from here to here is large R from the center or the axis of revolution to the outer edge of the of what we now have as a washer. That is capital R, and from the axis of revolution to the inner to the closest part of that region is small R. All right. So you can see that we have just these two concentric circles and we want, we're gonna wanna find the area of the, the, the dark part of that washer, right? It's very important for these problems and for the disc problems to make a sketch, show your X revolution, and we need to figure out what this big R radius is and what this small R radius is um, as a function of, of X. So you can see here that as we move across this way, this small r is constant. This distance is always one. But you can see as we move across this way, the large r is gonna vary as we move across. As our x values change, big r is gonna change. And that's gonna always, that big r is always gonna be the square root of x plus one. This part's constant, it's always plus one, but this square root of x is gonna change, All right? So we really need to be good about um, making a, a picture, making a, a, a visual representation of what we're doing, and then thinking big R is square root of x plus one, little r in this case is one. This is the first step to doing these washer problems figuring out what big R and little r are as a function of x. Once we do that, we can think about, okay, well, what's the area of this single washer? Well, the area is pi, pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. So if you find this entire area here and we subtract out the empty part in the middle, we get this, this washer or ring here. So that's the area of an individual washer. Um, times delta x, we can factor the pi out. We get r squared, big R squared minus little r squared times delta x. All right. And in this case, big R is the square, square root of x plus 1. Little r is 1. We square those, um, simplify a little bit, and we get this for the volume of one of our individual washers. Once you do that, we sum them all up. Again, kind of a Riemann sum type process. We get this um, integral here, the integral from zero to two of pi x plus two delta x, um, two square root of x dx. You can see that we're just integrating the individual washer area times the thickness. And again, we find antiderivatives, Evaluate it to evaluate it at zero, subtract, and we get kind of a messy looking answer, but it's six plus eight root two all over three times pi cubic units. So for the washer method, our general case is going to be pi times the integral from a to b. We have big R squared minus little r squared dx. Okay, notice that when we do this, we square each of the radii first. We square big R and we square little r first, then we do the difference. All right.
right? It's very important that we do that. We don't want to find the difference and then square We want to square them, then find the difference, and integrate from A to B, multiply by pi. That'll give us the volume.